With all the lost media topics I've covered over the years, it might seem like most of these things are fake, they never get solved, or the wild goose chases. But sometimes, believe it or not, these things actually do get solved pretty quickly. It's rare, but it happens. Take for instance, the story of the Tape World monster, which I literally covered two weeks ago. Not only was it identified within a day, but as the week passed, a lot of details about its production emerged. And strangely, this story wound up tying back into the story I made a few months back about the fake Durin Gray song. I know that sounds ridiculous, but bear with me in this new episode of Tales from the Internet. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. I used to love cereal when I was a kid, but as I got older, I don't really eat it so much. I just, I don't really like the flavor of really sweet things anymore. And the cereals that aren't sweet, they're just agonizingly bland. It's garbage and it's not tasty garbage. Magic Spoon changed all that with their cereals containing only 140 calories a serving, zero grams of sugar, only four net grams of carbs, and 13 to 14 grams of protein, so you can get swall. The variety pack comes with four delicious flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. I like it for an occasional snack, and my favorite is probably the peanut butter flavor. Magic Spoon is so confident in its product that they have a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Just click my link below and use code WANG at checkout and you'll get $5 off your Magic Spoon order. What flavor will you try? Whenever a YouTuber covers a lost media story, the dream is that you're just gonna put it in front of all of these new eyeballs and someone out of that crowd of hundreds of thousands, someone will just know automatically. They'll have remembered what it is and just tell you. Most times that doesn't happen. Although, believe it or not, for my channel, the Tape World Monster actually isn't the first example. Back in December, I made a video with three different unidentified songs. One of them entitled Medieval Song, which had been misattributed to various J-Rock bands such as Glay and also the anime Vampire Hunter D. And a lot of people who saw my video just happened to know that song. I got hit up on a bunch of different platforms by various people, so I'm not exactly sure who found it first. But in the comment section of my video, Zolby AB calling it was voted to the top, and that is Armored Apparition's Time of Death from Vampire Princess Miyu. And as it turns out, looking through the comment section on that upload of the song, we're just sitting out there in the open with several thousand views, correctly identified since 2009, Others in the past had embarked upon the same journey themselves. It makes you think about how many times in history this has probably happened where a person has searched for a song for years and then all of a sudden they just stumble on it out of the blue on YouTube. And now we have another case of such a quick solution, the Tape World Monster. Before I get into the solution, I just, I have to address the pin controversy. Because I got a lot of people saying to me, oh, you know, why do you keep calling them pins? They're thumbtacks. Listen, this right here, this is a thumbtack. The top is flat. You put your thumb on it. It's a thumbtack. Now this right here, that's a pushpin. Have you ever seen Mick Foley get thrown on a pile of thumbtacks and all of a sudden he gets up looking like all the colors of the rainbow? He doesn't turn into dude love. These are thumbtacks. But anyway, shortly after I create my video, there's a subreddit created, r slash tape world mystery, made by sadteen837. Early on in the search, a few different potential creators were contacted. First, there was Jamie Shannon who created Mr. Meaty. User the DGN emailed him and received a response. Hello, I'm afraid that very unique item is not made by me, so your search must go on. Funny, another person wrote me about this whatever it is what it is. Multiple other people also contacted the stop motion animator Lee Hardcastle, and it was Skelecool124 who received the response. Well, I've had three emails asking me the same thing. Crazy. Nah, nothing for me. Good luck with your search, LH. The sculptor Cleet Shields had also been contacted by several people. A response to user Goobygon. Hello, unfortunately I don't have any information for you about this character, nor do I recall ever having seen it before. Many messages have come my way about this, and though everyone has been very polite and kind, I simply don't have time to respond to all of them. So, would you kindly communicate to your fellow sleuths my lack of knowledge about this? I would be grateful. I'm sorry I couldn't be of help, but I wish you all the best of luck on your quest. May thanks, Cleet. Another potential lead was brought up by Sad Teen, the subreddit's creator. K 
Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Considering the clown-like appearance that some people suggested about the Tape World monster, it kinda makes sense. And also, Killer Clowns from Outer Space was distributed by a company called Transworld Entertainment. If you recall from my first video, this was the name of Tape World's parent company. And perhaps, if not Killer Clowns, maybe it was another movie they distributed. But here's the thing with that, and it's actually something I came across when I was working on my first video. You see, Transworld Entertainment, the parent company of FYE and all those stores, and Transworld Entertainment, the movie distributor, are actually two completely different companies. It's an easy mistake to make, and actually something that I thought was a potential lead when I was first looking into this. User the DGN had also brought up an archive of an old Bluetack contest for people making art using Bluetack. Unfortunately, most of it hasn't been saved in the archive, and you might remember that Bluetack was actually one of the things ruled out in the initial post. And you know what else was ruled out? Spy Kids. Well, as it turns out, a Redditor named Super Mario Sunshine 2 had watched Spy Kids a few years ago and a little detail stood out to them. Something one of the Spy Kids was holding after getting dropped off to school. So in Spy Kids, there's a TV show that one of the main characters, Junie, is obsessed with. Floops Fooglies. He watches it all the time, he draws his own ideas for Fooglies, and he collects the toys. It turns out there's a lot more to these Fooglies than initially meets the eye, but there's no need for me to spoil the movie for you right here. So after getting dropped off at school, Junie walks in carrying two action figures. One of these action figures is Floop. The other action figure is... There he is, the Tape World Monster. Now this would imply that the Tape World Monster is one of Floop's Fooglies. But here's the thing, and this is part of why it caught Super Mario Sunshine's two attention at first. Although you see the action figure of this Fugly, you never see the actual character in the movie. When he was looking for it, he thought that perhaps this was a scrapped character or something like that. That being said, at this point in the search, there were a lot of people who weren't entirely comfortable with saying that the search is done and it's from Spy Kids. Because there is a possibility that even though this was an action figure in Spy Kids, it might have just been that the scene called for a weird looking action figure, implying that the prop existed before Spy Kids. It's possible that the scene just called for some kind of weird looking toy and that's what the props department happened to have and gave it to him. That is a thing that does happen on set. And it is kind of odd that such a relatively insignificant piece of the movie would be a part of a cardboard standee promoting the movie. If this had been something that existed before Spy Kids, perhaps it might have been a cardboard standee from something entirely different. Despite that possibility though, I found it really unlikely, especially considering how central Fooglies are to the plot of this movie, that they wouldn't have had a specific prop prepared for this exact purpose. And sure enough, this eventually was confirmed to definitely be something that was made for Spy Kids. A user named Shadow Alchemy posted a worth point listening that documented a sale that had been made by E Movie Poster. It contained two pieces of concept art from Spy Kids signed by their creator Deborah Everton. One of these pieces being concept art of the Tape World monster. And here's another interesting thing about this. Deborah Everton, the artist who drew this concept art, was not a part of the props department. She was credited in Spy Kids as the costume designer. This means that, in all likelihood, this character was initially intended to be one of the main Fooglies that we see. For whatever reason though, it wound up not being one of them, but the design was integrated into this prop. And this film's art department did have several sculptors. Shadow Alchemy searched through them and happened upon the website of one of these sculptors named Patrick Thornton. And on his website, in progress shots of both the Tape World monster as well as the Floop action figure that we see at the same time. So I guess the last piece of the puzzle here then is to just find the full cardboard standee that this piece was taken off of. People have questioned why the full standee seems so difficult to find, but honestly, that is probably true for 99% of the cardboard standees that have ever been made for a movie. These are things that are just mostly destroyed after they're used. There was a rumor that this standee was actually just for the film premiere of it in LA, but to me that doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, why would a standee that was used just to promote a film premiere in LA somehow make it all the way to the other side of the country at a retail store that happens to have a lot of not as exclusive cardboard standees? 
Like, these stores are literally overwhelmed with the amount of cardboard standees they get. Why would they just be like, oh yeah, give us this other one? In all likelihood, it's probably just that nobody thought to keep it, and then one store manager decided to take this piece off. That being said, there is potentially one that is known to exist in the wild. Another worth point listing has circulated around the community dedicated to the search. It was originally delivered to a rental store, and it was still in the box because it was never set up. This listing, which was originally posted to eBay, did sell, but it didn't say how recently. A Reddit user named Van Groves contacted the original seller of the item. And the seller did respond, but unfortunately this item was sold a very long time ago and they have no other information about it. But it's out there somewhere in the world, possibly the only one still in existence. And now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this somehow ties into my old Darren Gray video. So after I made my original Tape World Monster video, I also made a short version for TikTok. And a lot of people started sending my TikTok to another content creator, Props to History. He specializes in the history of movie props, so he's someone who would know something about this. And as it turned out, he was already familiar with my content as well as the search. Uh, he's actually one of my favorite TikTokers. He made his own TikTok summarizing everything we knew about it and also finding where it is now. And with all that explained, he ended his video with this curious little nugget. Uh, the other reason I did this was, Justin, if you see this, uh, you did a video not too long ago about a song that was attributed to Duran Gray, when in fact it wasn't, and you got contacted by a person who said they had done it. Um, I know the person that did it, and I have some more information on it if you're interested. Uh, until then, drops to history. I had to know what he knew, so I immediately shot him a DM. So if you remember my video about this Duran Gray song, you'll remember that I said that, you know, this guy emailed me and anyone on the internet could say anything, so take all of it with a grain of salt. Well, props to history informed me that he was actually in the room when this song was made. That everything said by the person who emailed me was true, and that several songs were made and uploaded in this session, including another one called Bees. Obviously, the fake Duran Gray song became the most well-known one. To me, Props to History seems like a trustworthy guy, and it wouldn't make a lot of sense for him to lie about something like this that has nothing to do with the kind of content he makes. And he also corroborated a detail from the email that I didn't say in the video. So after hearing all this, although I was a little skeptical in the video I had released on it, I'm pretty confident saying that this is 100% the true story of that song. Also, give him a follow if you're into these kinds of stories. He has a YouTube channel, but he's more active on TikTok and he's currently in contact with the current owners of the Spy Kids prop, hoping to have some updates as to what it's looking like these days. But anyway, that's all for the Tape World Monster. If you like this video, check out my video on the story of loss. I'm out.